I asked the owner of this house for more lanterns. But he said they would draw attention. Yes, I imagine they would. The human eye is drawn to light. We can't help it. It just happens. There are many things we are drawn to without our thinking or our ability to explain why. Thank you for agreeing to meet. Thank you for trying to help Mary when you did. <sighs> it was no help. You were meant to be there. Me? So I could fail miserably at an exorcism in the Red Quarter? <laughs> if you had not been there that day, would you be on this roof tonight? I don't know where to start. I have so many questions. I... Shall we sit first? Oh, yes, of course. The Eastern Slums. Hmm. Many wandering preachers have succeeded in gathering crowds with their rhetoric and fiery tone. I've heard a few of them over the years myself. So you know the type. Mm -hmm. But I have never heard anyone tell a paralytic to get up and walk, much less it actually happened. So what is your conclusion? I believe you are not acting alone. No one can do these signs you do without having God in him. Only someone who has come from God. And how is that belief going over in the synagogue? <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we are here at this hour. What else? What have you come here to show us? A kingdom. That is what our rulers are worried about. No, not that kind. Then what? A sort of kingdom that a person cannot see unless he is born again. Born again? Yes. You mean like a new creature? A conversion from Gentile to Jewish? No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Then what is born again? <sighs> I hope you don't mean return to the womb, because that would be a problem for me. My mother, may she rest in peace, is dead. Truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. That part of you, that, is what must be reborn to new life. How can these things be? Ah, a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things, huh? I'm trying, Rabbi. I know. I know. Do you hear this? What? Listen. What do you hear? The wind. How do you know it's the wind? Because I can feel it. I hear its sound. Do you know where it comes from? No. Do you know where it's going? No. That's what it is to be born again of the Spirit. The Spirit may work in a way that is a mystery to you. And while you cannot see the Spirit, you can recognize his effect. mind is consumed with thoughts of what a stir these words would cause among the teachers of the law. Yes, and I do not expect otherwise. I speak of what I know and have seen, and it has not been received by the religious leaders. It is hard to receive. So if I have told you of earthly things, and you do not believe, how can I tell you heavenly things? I believe your words. I just fear you may not have a chance to speak many more of them before you are silenced. I have come to do more than speak words, Nicodemus. More miracles? Yes. But even more than that. Do you remember when the children of Israel 
complained against God and against Moses in the wilderness of Paran. Yes. They wanted to return to Egypt and they cursed the manna that God sent them. And then? They were bitten by serpents and they were dying. But? But God made a way for them to be healed. Moses lifted the bronze serpent in the desert and people only needed to look at it. So will the Son of Man be lifted up so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Our people are not dying from snake bites. They're dying from taxation and oppression. I'm sorry to disappoint you. But I did not come to deliver the people from Rome. Then from what? From sin. From spiritual death. God loves the world in this way. That he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So this has nothing to do with Rome. It's all about sin. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, Nicodemus. He sent him to save it through him. It's as simple as Moses' serpent on the pole. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Have you ever heard anything like this before? Shh. When I met Lilith, Mary, that day, I told my wife and my students I said she was beyond human aid. Only God could have healed her. And then I saw her healed. Here you are. The healer. I, my whole life, I have wondered if I would see this day. Follow me, and you'll see more. Follow you? Join me and my students. In two days' time, we leave Capernaum. Come see the kingdom I am bringing into this world. But I... I, I can't... You have a position in the Sanhedrin. You have family. You are getting advanced in years. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. But the invitation is still open. The invitation to what exactly? lead a nomadic life to, to give up who I am. It's true. There is a lot you would give up. But what you would gain is far greater and more lasting. Is this another one of your born-again mysteries? <laughs> uh, maybe. I know mysteries aren't easy for a scholar. Think about it. Hmm? Take your time. On the morning of the fifth day, we leave and we'll meet by the well in the southern quarter at dawn. Is, is this. <laughs> is the kingdom of God really coming? What does your heart tell you? My heart is swollen with fear and, and wonder. It can tell me nothing except that I am standing on holy ground. <laughs> holy roof, anyway. I do hope you come with us, Nicodemus. Is the sun, lest he be angry and you perish in the way.
Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Ha, ha, ha.